Hello everyone. Today we're going to look at using the Haas intuitive programming system to create a complex shape. Uh, this is pretty much called the irregular shapes pattern. Um, to get to intuitive, we're going to go to the MDI mode and we're going to go to our program conversational button which brings up our intuitive programming. Now the profiler actually exists inside of the turn and face tab and we're going to go over to profile and enter that. The machine always asks you what you would like. It's going to ask you in these prompts here, what tool number do you want to use? Let's use tool number one for this example. I'm going to press enter. The work offset, we're going to use the G54 work offset for this example. And the cut type, horizontal type one is uh, going to represent a shape that consistently gets larger and larger in X if it's an OD cut or smaller and smaller in X if it's an ID. If you actually have an undercut, uh, say for instance a thread relief or something like that, you would actually switch over to the horizontal type 2 cut. We're going to stick with horizontal type 1 for this example. X-axis stock allowance. This is how much we want to leave for a finish pass a little later. We'll give ourselves about 20 thousandths of stock allowance in X, about 3 thousandths of stock allowance in Z. Depth of cut per pass, we'll say about an eighth of an inch to the side. These three areas here um, are going to be representative of a different cut type. So that's why these three questions tell us not valid with this cut type. So we're just going to go ahead and zing through those. Feed rate per revolution, 14 thousandths looks good to me. Maximum RPM, what is the safest that you can run this, this, this part without fear of throwing it out of the chuck? Surface footage, we're going to go at about 400 surface feet for roughing. Spindle direction, if this is a right-handed tool, we're going to stick with forward rotation there. Cutter compensation. We're going to want to go cutter comp right if we're cutting an OD towards the chuck. Coolant, we'll go ahead and use coolant for this example. Mirror imaging, if for some reason we had a tool cutting on the opposite side of center line, we may need to use mirror imaging, but otherwise we're just going to go ahead and leave this off. And with the profile, uh, the shape creator, we can actually save multiple profile numbers, but what I'm going to do is get into that profile selector and I'm just going to select the first empty shape. Once you do that, you'll notice that your graphics change over to this uh, Excel spreadsheet uh, looking format where we can actually draw the shape that we want to create. Now let's say our part is a 4 inch OD raw stock and it's about 6 inches long and we're just going to draw a shape that we want to cut. So our raw dimension here is where we're going to start. That's going to be 4 inches in X. And let's say it's 0 and Z just to save a little time. We're going to we're going to say that we've already faced off the part. I'm going to use the enter button which will move the highlighted red arrow keys over to the next line until we get to the rapid point. Typically the rapid point is always equal to the raw stock OD. So we're going to say we're going to rapid to an X of 4 inches but as far as Z goes, we're going to actually wrap it to a hundred thousandths off the face of the part because when we take each roughing pass, we don't want to scrape the face of the part between passes. Enter my way over to the next line and it's going to ask me for a starting point. The starting point is an X dimension off the part before you start feeding to Z0 or feed to the face of the part. For this example, I'll start at an X of 0.75 and a Z of point 0.1. Enter my way over to the next line. Once you get to the line where you start defining the shape, it's going to ask you if you want to, if you're going to do a feed move to enter a number one for a feed move or four for no move. I'm going to type in the number one here for a feed move and I'm going to feed to Z0. My next move is going to be to feed up to X of 1.0. In a different section, I'm going to cover the use of these angles, but typically an angle of 180 is traveling towards the chuck. An angle of 90 is traveling up. An angle of 0 is traveling toward the tailstock. 
and an angle of 270 is traveling down. Of course, if you had some different compound angles, which I'm going to create here, I'll try to illustrate where these angles are actually used. We're going to go ahead and put a corner radius here of about 80 thousandths. I'm going to press enter, which will advance me to the next line. We're now going to feed. We're going to stay at X diameter of 1 inches, and we're going to go back a negative 1 inches in Z. You'll notice in this area that the drawing is starting to be displayed as we continue to put dimensions in. Let's say I want a corner radius on that guy also of a half inch. And let's say that that next feed move actually runs into an angled line. So I'm going to press feed here. And let's say my X dimension goes up to two and a half inches. And let's say my Z dimension, I don't really know what that dimension is, but I do know that it's a 30 degree angle. Well, earlier I mentioned that 180 degrees is a straight line going toward the chuck. So 150 degrees would equal a 30 degree angle. So I'm going to go ahead and input an angle of 150 degrees here. And you'll notice how it automatically calculated my end point in Z for me. It does the math. That next radius, I'm going to put a half inch corner radius on that corner as well. And then we're going to feed straight back in Z to a negative 3 inches. Our next feed move would go up to, let's just uh, go ahead and taper again right up to the OD of the part. So we'll go up to 4 inches in X. The Z dimension we don't know. And that dimension, if it's a 45 degree angle, is actually an angle of 135. Now you'll notice that I don't have a corner radius on this corner right here. And let's say I really needed a three quarter corner radius right here. Um, if I use my up arrow key on the machine here, I can actually advance to the previous line and then my cursor will highlight that corner. I can then go over to the radius portion there and insert my radius size automatically. Now, the F4 key can be used to activate zoom. It allows you to zoom in on your shape to have a better look at everything. But once you're happy with what you see, you're going to use the F2 button to save and exit that shape. That saves the shape and exits the program. Once we exit the shape creator and we go back to our standard cutting page here, this is where we have the opportunity to either press cycle start if we just want to make the part straight in MDI mode, or we press the F4 button to actually record this guy out to a program. We're going to create a new program out of this particular shape and I'm going to pick a program number that doesn't exist yet. I'll just say program number 02000. Hit enter which actually creates my G-code program. I'm going to move this guy out of the way a little bit and go over to edit mode and you'll notice that my program for that profile is already made here. I'll go to memory mode. I'll go to setting graph. And I'm going to cycle start this, this guy. And there's my shape. I'm going to zoom in on that part a little bit by pressing the F2 button. Pressing the page down button to make the window smaller. And then using the arrow keys to surround the shape of the part. Press enter once again. Now I'm zoomed in on my shape, and if I'd like to, I could single block my way through this shape so we can watch this simulation line for line. Each one of the roughing passes and the final roughing pass. Now, if for any reason I want to run a finish pass afterwards, I could go straight back to the shape creator. I'm still using the same profile number. However, this time around my cut type is going to change from a horizontal type 1 or 2 to just a finish forward, which means toward the chuck. I'm going to press the F4 button to record this. We're, gonna, we're not going to create a new program. We're going to output it to the current program that we're working on. So I'm going to press the enter button. I'm going to press the blue end key, which is actually going to bring my cursor to the bottom and I'm going to press the enter button to create that program. 
So now, my, now I actually have a profile here, and then I have the finish shape underneath it as well. Run through the program, roughing the part, and here comes the finish pass. And that concludes our section of covering the shape creator. Thank you for watching.